You know, people talk about star ratings, and we were just having an interesting conversation a few minutes ago about headlines and the headlines that you see online, which I think it's, um, can you tell me what happened when you, when you saw the first headline? And <laughs> well, when we, well, when we went online and um, the headline was first printed online, we saw Lucia still thrills. And so we were reading that and it was exciting. And then um, later in the day, my, my parents happened to be in town. And so when they came over, I popped it up and went to go show them. And then it was like, fabled Lucia loses a star. I was like, oh, <laughs> which is of course a different feeling when you're showing your parents you know, what the lead is, you know, it's one thing to be like, Lucia still thrills, and then um, another when the title changes and what you expect, you're like, oh, I mean, it, there, you know, it's... One is positive and one is negative. It, it gives it a, a different spin. I yeah, think. And, yeah. You know, when you're, when you're showing your folks and you're talking to your team about it, it's kind of, it changes the way it's first perceived, especially since online is you know most the way many people get news these days and that's the first thing that gets clicked and sometimes if that's the only thing that they see maybe they won't read in to feel like you know this is a place that they want to come or what have you but i think i think um even what it was changed to it said but it's still worth um i can't remember exactly what the headline was but it um worth fighting for worth yeah. fighting for. okay fighting for that. <laughs> and people do fight for tables but like what did you how did you feel about it once you know once people click on that because a lot of people did click, you know, no matter what the headline was. So once once you got into the text and were, you know, talking about it with your parents and with your staff, what 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 was that? Um, what was that like? Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, by and large, it was a positive review, and and so felt pretty good about it. Um, the the star thing, obviously, like that that was a disappointment, but it it also is one of those weird things when we when we were first reviewed five and a half years ago, five years ago, um, and we got five stars, I was really excited, but I didn't, like, I wasn't super, uh, I don't know how to put it. Um, I never really thought of Lucia as something that I had the goal of having five stars for. In fact, I think in our business plan, we actually said, you know, four stars, that's, that's mm -hmm. what we're after. Mm -hmm. That's what I think we'll get. Um, so you did the four star thing so well that you got five stars. <laughs> <laughs> But, but honestly, I never, like, I, I never felt like Lucia played inside the same kind of boundaries as other five-star restaurants. Mm -hmm. I, didn't, I didn't think that it really applied. I mean, the amount of time and effort that goes into what we do here is, I mean, obviously very labor intensive. Yeah. And um, I felt like, you know, that part of it is, is worthy of the five stars. But I mean, as far as like, you know, do we have tablecloths? Well, at the time, you know, the other five-star restaurants, they were mainly, you know, white tablecloth style restaurants. So, you know, part of that might be a, you know, paradigm shift in, in what is counted as a five-star. But I, I, never really, I never really thought of us as a five-star restaurant. Yeah. Um. I do think you were sort of at the cutting edge of that paradigm shift, though. I think it was a time when we're starting to see in Dallas people, you know, chefs approaching cooking and putting it out there in a, in a different way, you know, less formal, yeah. more handcrafted. Can you tell us um, about, you know, I mean, you're doing everything by hand here. You're making your bread, you're, you're doing all the pastas. Like, what, is, what, is, what does that mean for you? Well, um, when we opened up the restaurant, or before we opened up the restaurant, the, the idea, I wanted to have um, a whole lot better connection with the people that dine here. I wanted to be able to see people that are, you know, where they're sitting and, you know, see what they're eating and, and how they enjoy it and, and all of that. Uh, when, I don't know, the, the easiest thing for me to um, really apply is that labor and, and the, my own hands and you know, my chefs and cooks, everybody's hands. It's that, that I believe is where I derive a whole bunch of satisfaction. It's, mm -hmm. it's the knowing that I started out with this and I, I ended up over here as opposed to, you know, like, you know, buying a whole bunch of more prepared items or, you know, yeah. things like that. Um, it's, it's a point of pride to be able to do all those things. And it's also a point of pride to um, be able to have uh, growth within that whole spectrum. I mean, the, the way we make pasta now is completely different than the way we made pasta when we first started. We actually had to change all of the recipes. Wow. We, uh, 
we also have different um, so like you know, how, how, is, how is that different yeah. how, what, what like specifically what about the pasta is different well um, we started out with a lot uh, softer higher moisture content doughs um, and 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 so we've worked into a, a a lot firmer dough and part of that is made possible by a nicer machine mm -hmm. that we just got I don't know a year ago but um, we also have uh, suppliers of uh, really nice interesting flowers you know so like you know einkorn or you know we I, I dabbled a little bit at the beginning with you know spelt and using other kinds of flour for uh, the purposes of making pasta but now we have a whole lot cooler wider selection of things and so that that's just yeah the pasta too yeah I mean, the salumi we when we opened up we didn't start out that's right with, you make all your own salumi yeah. all the the cured meats and right yeah when we first started we we would buy you know sections of pigs you know we would buy uh primals and that's that's what they call them and uh now we buy we get whole hogs and we go through whole hogs and i've i've been able to you know work with everybody in the kitchen staff to teach them how to break down a whole hog and we know how to use the entire thing we've Done Which is very thing. European. It's yeah. what they do in Italy and France, and it's it's really yeah. nice to be able to do that. Um, yeah, you know, I think you get a lot more, and you get a lot more out of it, literally and figuratively. Mm -hmm. So you know, I, I feel like we're at this funny time in terms of restaurants and the way restaurants are run and the way chefs conceive of restaurants. You know, we're coming from this place of you know in the '80s and '90s and you know, early 2000s, chef-driven restaurants sort of came into the fore, right? So everything's about the chef and chef-driven and, you know, the chef speaking through the menu and all of that stuff. And then recently we're seeing more chefs who are opening different restaurants. Yeah. So like if you're a chef, and I, and, I, and I keep asking myself this, you're a chef, now you have three restaurants. So how can each of those be a chef-driven restaurant? You're putting a different executive chef in charge of each of them. So is it the chef owner's vision? Is it that executive chef's? And then, like, we're seeing, we seem to be going through the spate of restaurants losing, you know, their staffs imploding, people, you know, losing chefs or firing chefs or whatever's going on. So what happens to the identity of that restaurant? You seem to have, you seem to not have that issue here because you're here and you're here all the time, pretty much, which is really, you know, it's becoming, it's becoming a rare thing. And I was wondering if you could sort of tell us, you know, what that, that means for you or how you think about that. Mm, let's see. Well, I mean, I, I would, the idea of, uh, of the chef-driven restaurant, I mean, clearly that, that was the idea here. Um, can I, I chime in? Yeah, go ahead. I think, I mean, in our case, I mean, we're a funny little beast because we're 14 tables in odd in, in Dallas in the first place. But I mean, for us, we wanted to create a place where we work together. You know, we spent much of our married lives not being quite on the same schedule. To, so to be able to be able to be in a place and create a place where we could do something that we loved together, mm -hmm. um, you know, with him in the back of the house and, and me in the front was awesome. And part of that was creating a, a place where people wanted to come and do the kind of work that we, we do. I mean, you really have to want to work in a teeny tiny little place like this. I mean, we're not a big place. You know, you can't, you have to say behind you corner like a lot more than you do <laughs> yeah. in, in other restaurants. And I think part of that is finding the people who are as passionate about touching all the food and whatnot. I mean, people like Justin, you know, to be able to be here and have a vision that can be shared and, you know, see how that goes. I think it's not, I think it's a different mentality from people who go into the idea that this is our restaurant group and this is the kind of things that we do. It kind yeah. of, it's, it's a little bit more informal and a little bit more, you know, hands-on. I don't know. Hands-on and personal. And, yeah. Very personal. And, <laughs> and, and, how, and how does hospitality come into play? Because that's, to me, that's one of the great things about, you know, just what it like, feels like to walk into this place. It feels like, oh my goodness, these are people who understand hospitality. And so I'm wondering if that's something that you like, how conscious are you of nurturing that part of the restaurant or is it just come naturally to you or like what, you know, what's, uh, how important is hospitality or how do you think Very, about it? I mean, thank you. I mean, first of all, thank you. I mean, we want, we want especially Lucia to feel like a place where people do feel welcome and it's, 
it's not our home, but it is a little bit of an extension. We want people to feel welcome. You know, we are not, we want people to come in and feel like they have a great time, whether that's they're you know, from the neighborhood and they're just grabbing a bite of pasta because the bar seats were open or it's people celebrating anniversaries. It's fun because we, we've been open long enough now where we have you know, people that we do know by name and we do know they have families and stuff. So I think it's just a matter of what we grew up with. We both had grandmothers were like, get in this house, come eat. Yeah. You know? And it's what we like to do. You know? So we show. want people to, to come in and feel welcome and have a good time and, and enjoy it. You know, ours is not the everything is silent and everything's ironed and pressed and perfect but hopefully it's it's genuine and warm and you don't go away hungry is really what we're going for we so, wanted it to feel like yeah. people were kind of coming in to eat at our house yeah kind of yeah. you know just that feel yeah yeah and it's, it, it's interesting that you're you know talking about wanting to work together and create a certain you know certain atmosphere and warmth and um and David, you were talking before um, about making pasta, how that's part of your day, mm -hmm. and you know, and the and the pleasure in it. So it sounds like you guys are sort of trying to keep the pleasurable parts of cooking and offering hospitality and 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 running a restaurant without sort of letting that get away. Does that feel like accurate? Or I think it, we we think of it probably just all of a piece and yeah. that maybe just one follows the other. I think when you, you're lucky enough to get to do something that you enjoy, it, it, it hopefully comes through, you know, in, in something that when you, when you do take joy in it, you just, you don't think about it so much. There are just some things that you're better at. Don't ask me to do math. But <laughs> <laughs> what, um, David, when you have young cooks coming through, mm -hmm. what, what, is there one piece of advice that, that you feel like they need in general or like is there something that you want to I imagine that you're a mentor to them um, ideally yeah <laughs> um, well I mean that I don't know that I could reduce it down to one thing yeah I mean what, what we do here at Lucia and I don't I don't know if you know or have noticed but the way we uh, cycle cooks through um, we we have several stations and I don't hire a saute cook I don't hire a pasta cook I hire a cook and so they start out at one and then they work their way to another and then another and the idea is is that for they get to see as much as they possibly can and it requires a lot of commitment on their part mm -hmm. um, because you know the ones who are really experienced and they come in they, they have to start out slicing salumi or doing something that's you know generally considered uh, you know working in the pantry kind of thing to working their way up but most of the, I mean, I would say that the people who have been here for a while, they've completely bought into that. And, and that's, that's what we want. I've always wanted to hire people who are, have a great attitude and they really want to be here over having tons and tons of experience. And how big is your kitchen staff? Well, let's see. We have Sam right now in the pantry. Aldo is uh, working pasta. Kevin is saute. And we have Taylor making bread and pasta and stuff in the morning. Yeah. Not, not to mention, obviously, the guy who makes it work, Justin. Okay, great. So. Um, and I think, finally, um, what people really want to know is how do we get a table? <laughs> <laughs> well, um, we always try to say um, that we're happy to have you. If we have the table, you can have it. I mean, we keep the four seats at the bar um, or walk-in. Uh, outside, if the weather's lovely, those are walk-in too. And we keep cancellation lists uh, because People go out of town, people, babysitters can't make it. And the more flexible people can be on time, you know, we're much more likely to be able to accommodate. It's really, we, we don't have a ton of reservations all at seven and 7.30, but if you say we'd love eight o'clock, but any time between 6.30 and eight would be fine, we are much more likely to be able to get you in. And we'd be happy so to like if you, so, okay, normally you would take reservations starting the first of the month um, or the first Tuesday, if it's a Sunday or a Monday for the following month. So June 1st, you'll start taking July reservations. Mm -hmm. So if you want a prime table, you probably do that. But what if we're like in mid, mid month, does it make, is, is it worth a shot to pick up the phone on a Tuesday and say, Hey, do you have anything today or later this week? Is, Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. So people and, actually get and, tables that way. And leave us a message. I think okay. one of the things that surprises people is that we don't have someone answering the phone all the time. 
and that's because we're small. There are only two of us who answer the phones, and so there's not a 24-hour phone line, but we check the messages, and we use it actively. So if you just say, if anything opens up tonight, please call me, we will. If something opens, we will call you. Um, and I think that's something that's been nice to see. I think people are realizing that, that they can, and we want them to know that we would like them to have come, come eat pasta with us. Wonderful. Anything else you'd like um, our readers to know about? Well, honestly, I, I, I kind of I think it would be remiss if I didn't bring up the whole star system again. Great. Um, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, when we opened, I didn't feel like we were five stars. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like this restaurant and has progressed quite a bit, and and we've learned quite a bit, and we've had a you know good number of people who um, have helped make us better. I think a lot of our systems are better now. And, and so I just, I, I, I would want my cooks to know that I'm not disappointed. I've told them directly, mm -hmm. but I'm not disappointed that we lost a star. Um, I don't, I, I'm proud of what they do on a daily basis. That's it. Okay, great. Well, it's, it's a wonderful restaurant and I'm thrilled to eat here. <laughs> Thank you. Any day of the week. <laughs> Thank you Thank so you. Even at 5.30, which I don't even believe is dinner time yet. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much. Thank, Thank you. you.